So it seems like everyone's talking about AI these days. And you very likely have seen uh, examples of AI-generated art and images and have been pretty impressed by what sort of output uh, can be artificially produced uh, by AI. And I thought it'd be fun to uh, take a look at one of these projects and play around a little with the technology to generate images. And so today we'll be looking at Dolly from OpenAI and a little bit about how to use the API or application programming interface in a Python application. And I'll provide some links with instructions to accompany the video along with Python source code so you can try everything out for yourself. Now, to get started, you'll want to visit openai.com and have a look around. Um, so you want to sign up for an account uh, and read through the getting started introduction, including the quick start uh, tutorial uh, that I'm showing here. And um, of course, we'll be uh, doing some image generation. And so here are some instructions that are uh, specific to that. And just have a, a quick look when we're using an API. Um, uh, it's actually quite simple when it comes down to it. There's only a, a few parameters that have to be passed in and you get um, a response out uh, in the form of uh, a URL. Uh, so there's a link that's provided for you to view the image and, and download it. Now, once you have signed up um, to your account, uh, you'll need to generate an API key and save it to your local machine. So this key is private to you and should not be shared. You'll need this key for your application to access um, the A API or actually get responses from the API. Uh, currently, when you sign up, you get an $18 credit, which will allow you to do a ton of exploration work with Dolly at, at, at no cost. Uh, each image that's generated only takes pennies of credit, so go, it does go a long way. Uh, you'll be able to monitor how much credit you have left through your open AI account information. And just to have a, a quick look here, you can see that uh, uh, you know, generating um, an image uh, is quite affordable, right? And there are different levels of, of pricing depending on the res resolution of the images you're generating. Okay, so now once you set up your OpenAI account and you have your key saved locally, you can start coding with the API. Uh, you'll need Python installed along with the OpenAI library. Uh, again, I'll have links to instructions to help you out if you're not familiar with this stuff. Uh, and what I've done is uh, write a Python application uh, that provides a GUI interface um, to the API instead of um, having to change the code and rerun it every time. It's a lot more convenient this way. And this is the, the code you're looking at right now. Um, but when it comes down to it, you know, the, uh, the actual uh, usage of the API is, uh, again, quite simple, right? So we have a, a, a prompt, which is the, the text used to generate the image, um, a number uh, n, um, the number of images you want created from that prompt. Um, and again, there's randomness to it. So, um, you know, each image will be unique. And uh, of course, the, the size, the resolution of the image that you want to generate. Uh, so again, the, the code for this um, will be shared. I'll provide you a link. And when you do run the code, you will see 
this GUI here. Okay, and so there are some input fields. First thing you'll want to do is browse and uh, point to your uh, key. Now I've saved it as OpenAI underscore API underscore key dot text, and that contains the the key that you uh, you signed up for. Um, what I've done here is uh, have the ability to uh, save uh, your session, essentially your session information, uh, in a log file. So I'll just enter this as uh, dal dot log, and what this will do is uh, record your prompts. Uh, your other input parameters, as well as the output. So that's way, that way you have a, a record uh, of the work you've done and can sort of um, you know, trace back uh, your work uh, and save the uh, URL responses that, that are generated. Okay, so let's, let's get started. Um, I guess we have a prompt parameter field, um, as I said, that is what Dali uses to generate images. Uh, it basically comes down to this in terms of the quality of output you're going to get out of the AI model. Uh, good prompt formulation is key. So let's try a few here. Okay, just for fun. We'll say cute puppy grilling dogs on the barbecue. Okay, let's generate two images and we'll keep this at a resolution of 512 by 512. We'll hit the generate button and now we're waiting for a response um, through the API and here we go. We have the response output and, and what that output is, is um, uh, basically web links. Now we're going to go to our browser. And we're going to have a look. Ah, it's a cute image, kind of cartoonish. And what I'll do actually is I'll paste the other link another image kind of interesting okay so now let's actually go back to our interface again let's try uh, some other prompts okay see what, what kind of things we can do let's say a close-up black and white um, studio photographic portrait of a beautiful dark haired woman wearing a furry. Interesting. Again, we'll, we'll generate two images, same resolution. And let's see what we come up with here. Okay, we got responses again. And yeah. Okay, so let's let's have a look. Okay, let's uh, replace this. Wow. That's quite amazing. And I'll get the other image here. Hmm. Similar. Similar. Yeah. You can see how powerful this is. Okay, let's try... Okay, let's try a 
couple of other ones. Okay, how about a cat crossing a busy street in Paris in the style of Monet? Let's see what we get. Okay, I'm going to copy that and paste it in the browser. Let's see what we get. Interesting. Interesting. Let's try that. That's amazing. Yeah. So, okay. I think that's enough to get started for now. Uh, if you end up trying to replicate this using my instructions and code example, let me know where any descriptions could be improved and I'll work on it. Uh, in the meantime, I'll be tinkering with other AI examples and applications along with uh, other projects I plan to share in future videos. So until next time, have fun tinkering.